Good Friday service. This initially was started off as a video for Watton Road Baptist Church and then I got chatting to church leaders and thought wouldn't it be good if we try and do something together. Now we're low tech, um, I'm not able to incorporate little videos of other people but hopefully I'll be able to get Vanessa and Sue on the phone who'll participate with us and as you can hear we've got the band of the Salvation Army with us and it's been really good to have them with us and they'll be with us a bit later. My name's Simon, if you don't know me I'm the lead minister of Watmore Road Baptist Church uh, and it's great to be in Hucknall and great to be sharing this with people from the other churches. Who would have thought a year ago when we were in St Mary's for that wonderful service we had there in that beautiful church that we'd be in this position where we'd be confined to our homes but God is bigger than that um, and we come together in the name of Jesus to worship him. So it's good to share together in these things. Well, we're going to start with a really great song. And in all the chaos around us, we can give thanks that it's in Christ alone our hope is found. He is our strength. He is our soul. And if you can, stand with me to worship him as we sing this. i 
Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Getty. Well, uh, I've got Vanessa here. Are you there, Vanessa? Yes, I am. Hi, Fire. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, it's been it's been really difficult uh, getting the Gettys and the Salvation Army Band and everyone else in our house. I tell you, it's been it's I'm been not surprised. Hard. Yeah. So, <laughs> how are you doing, Vanessa? Yeah, I'm doing very well, thank you. Yes, learning to live life in a very different way, and like you... uh, everyone needs to do. Yeah. And, and tell us some of the things that your church have been doing over the last few weeks in this crisis that we've had. Yeah, I, um, in the earliest weeks, we were endeavouring to uh, cook lunches for people, mm. to elderly people, etc. And we were um, delivering them around to people's homes. But then once uh, we were given the lockdown instructions, then we felt we needed to stop doing that, um, partly because of... Um, the number of people needing to be in the kitchen actually to produce the meals and then of course the delivery drivers um so we just felt mm. that was um mm. too dangerous to continue um but we took out as many meals as we could we took out frozen meals so that at that time we gave people as much food as possible we took out hampers uh to families um so we we just did everything we could at that point and then since that time uh, because we're registered on the mm. Notts County Council Community Hub uh, and through Ashford District Council, then um, I've been getting quite a number of calls from social services, Age UK, organisations like that, and individuals um, asking if I can help with shopping uh, or collecting prescriptions for people who are uh, self-isolating. Uh, so I've been kept quite busy doing uh, that mm. uh, over the last couple of weeks, and uh, I'll continue doing it for as long mm. as I can. That's the uh, the whole mm. idea behind it. Mm. That's great. Uh, and Vanessa, can you commit us to the Lord in prayer? Certainly. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for your love and your care at all times in our lives. But at this Easter time, when everything feels so different, mm. we ask especially that we might know you are closer than ever before. Mm. Lord, you know how much we love meeting together on Good Friday and not being able to do that just mm. feels uh, just feels wrong when we've been able to do this for such a long time. Mm. But we pray that though we might be separated physically, we will feel really close to each other through mm. you uh, as we join together spiritually. Mm. Lord, for those who are so devastated uh, mm. by the events at this time, for those who are ill or um, worse than that, even have suffered the death of a loved one, mm. uh, we ask that you will draw incredibly close to them. Mm. We want to see you glorified through all this we want to see your name lifted high not people turning mm. away from you but people turning to you so mm. lord as we think about the cross we think about how mm. you suffered we think about the heartbreak of god as you mm. hung there on the cross we know that you must be heartbroken again now for the way our world finds itself mm. so heavenly father through jesus we pray that you might uh, strengthen each and every one of us pour out your love upon us again mm that this world of ours might turn to you. Mm. May this Easter time, different as it is, uh, be something wonderful that we look back on and realise that people mm. once more thought about Easter, thought about the cross, thought about your resurrection. We just praise you, uh, Heavenly Father, praise you, Jesus, and ask for your continued blessing upon us all. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you in all that you're doing, and thank you for... Thank you. All the you way you too. serve our Keep town. Good work. Yeah, okay. and okay. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. That was Vanessa Hollingworth, who is Minister of West Hucknall Baptist Church, and also she leads churches together in Hucknall, Limby, and Patwick, whom we are. Well, we're going to sing another song together, um, and this is a modern song, uh, and it's about uh, about 
casting our mind to Calvary. So many things on our minds at the moment. Uh, I'm trying to limit my intake of the news because uh, it feeds anxiety. I just try and look at it once a day. Um, but the rest of the time, cast my mind to the Lord, particularly to Calvary, where Jesus died, looking forward to the empty tomb. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree His body bowed and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The ancient seal by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone
It's great to have you with. This is the second time we've had you with us because this morning we we had you there and the and the file got corrupted. So I really hope it's going to work properly today. <laughs> Never uh, mind. <laughs> now, so you've got. If you tell us kind of what you've been doing up until now and what you're going on to, um, we all know you really well, but we know there's a big change about to come. There is, um, of course. Most people will know me from um, being a minister in in and around Hucknall um, and mm. further out into Nottingham. And uh, in February, I went part time as a chaplain working in the hospitals mm. at Nottingham and that's City Hospital and at Queen's. Um, from this month, um, in just over a week, I will be starting there full term as a chaplain. So a very big change. So um, I will be leaving the churches um, in in some respect, but I will be remaining in Hucknall um, for the time being anyway, at least. Mm. Well, it's Good Friday. and We're thinking about the cross. Can you tell us, uh, Sue, what the cross means in the ministry that you're doing now? Well, a chaplain is called to share support with those who are in their storms of life. Um, we care for patients and families and staff. And in particular, at the moment, we think especially of the staff at the hospital. So we're there to offer some spiritual support mm. and pastoral care, especially in the difficult times. Mm. But I relate this really to this Holy Week and um, and as we come to the, the cross of Good Friday. Now, the chaplain is there because we give out, hopefully, compassion and understanding to those who have faith or even none. We're there at the first cry of breath and final breath. So we're there in both good and difficult times. For me, as I think about Good Friday and the journey that Jesus followed towards the cross, it was his most difficult journey. And it's really a week that turns endings into new beginnings. Mm -hmm. So as we journey or accompany somebody, mm -hmm. as that what a, um, that's what a chaplain does, mm -hmm. we hope that we will show hope, love and compassion. And I think about a Bible verse, particularly at the moment, it's nothing to do with the passion narratives, but it's Matthew 25, where it says, And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Mm. If we can see everyone with the face of Jesus, in their most difficult need, we see a person also on a journey of suffering and of pain. Mm. But in that cross, they can be brought back to him. The cross is a sacrifice to end all mm. others. Mm. We, we find that through sacrifice, Jesus showed us the greatest love that he could show us. Mm. So when I'm visiting people, they are all different and uh, their journey is different. Some are lonely. Some are in great pain. Others are needing to be forgiven. And so as we visit them, we hope that we will lift them and help them to release whatever is happening for them. To know that they are forgiven before they are healed in life or by death. It's not about us, it's all about God. The cross does that for mm. us. Jesus did that for us. He died mm. that we are forgiven. But there's something more. There's something beyond the cross which brings hope. And that's what we look for, isn't it, today? We look for the resurrection, the Easter, the new beginning. Mm. Yes, beautifully put. Um, well, I'm going to pray for you now and I'll ask everyone thank watching you. to join with us in prayer and then you're going to bring the reading to us. So let, let's, yes, let's pray for you. you. Oh, God of peace, 
we do thank you that you have called dear Sue to be that person of peace in the hospital, to minister peace, to breathe your peace upon people and pray that you would help her and equip her in that. She's come at this task in a very, very challenging time. But we pray, Father, she would know your help and your equipping, for you have called her here for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The reading is from Mark chapter 15, beginning at verse 33. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lima, Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. Mm -hmm. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salome. They used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. Thank you very much, Sue. God bless you in your ministry. Thank you, Simon. God bless. We'll miss you from here, but I hope we'll still see you around. Yes, yeah. I hope so okay. too. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Bless you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Well, I had hoped to bring a lot of other people into this. Uh, Gaynor, the the officer at the Salvation Army, was initially involved in the first take, but I've had to do it again this afternoon, so she can't be with us Um uh, I've, I've tried to make it as a united service as, as possible. But I will say I've never known a time actually when um, church leaders in Hapnell have been in touch with each other more because we're all supporting one another and encouraging one another in this very difficult time. But as the people of God, this is our time to serve in the name of Jesus, to come alongside people, to help them and to bring them peace. Well, it doesn't really feel like Good Friday, does it? I was really looking forward to going down to St Mary's and I believe, I think Trevor was supposed to be leading the service down there. Uh, and, I, and I always love listening to Trevor. Love being in that church, beautiful building and all being together, hundreds of us packed in there. But it's not to be this year, but it is still Good Friday and it is a Good Friday, despite what's going on around us. I used to wonder what that meant, though. I used to say to my mum, why is it called Good Friday? It's a bad thing that's happened, surely. Jesus has died. And she explained that Jesus's death was a good thing because it led to his resurrection. But actually, when I've delved into it more, I've seen it used to be called God's Friday and along the time got changed to Good Friday. It's interesting that, that when you say goodbye, to someone what you're actually saying is god be with you and it's got shortened so i i hear something to have a bit of fun make sure your atheist friends say goodbye to you not cheerio goodbye because then they're saying god be with you even richard dawkins says that to people when he's on tv and he's actually saying god be with you well today we're going to briefly look at this passage in mark we're going to go back to that first god's friday to see what God was doing there. And we're going to look at this part of Mark's account to find that out. What was going on? Well, firstly, there was darkness. For three hours, Jesus had hung on the cross, his body searing with the agony of crucifixion. 
his back smarting from the brutal scourging that he'd endured at the hands of the Romans, his ears ringing with the taunts of the people, his heart heavy that all the disciples except John had deserted him and fled, and that Peter had denied that he'd even known him. Then it was the sixth hour, which was actually in our clock, noon, the point when the sun was at its highest. The darkness came over the whole land for three hours. What did this mean? Well, the people of God, the Jews, would have known from the Old Testament that darkness was associated with judgment. For example, <coughs> the ninth plague, the plague of darkness. Moses was to stretch his hand over the land and there was darkness. There was judgment. Who was coming into that darkness, that judgment, that place without God? Jesus. Bearing that judgment upon himself for our sake. He entered that darkness on our behalf. So that however dark these times may feel, we know he's there. He's shedding light. He takes our hand and brings us through it. <coughs> and as well as darkness, there is desertion. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He spoke those in the Aramaic language, which was used every day at that time. He's quoting Psalm 22. And this is a righteous person suffering, calling out to God, saying, where are you in all of this, God? Incredible words coming from the mouth of the Son of God. Martin Luther said, God forsaken of God? How can this be? Well, Jesus is giving us a glimpse of what's going on. Here he is in physical agony, the searing pain of crucifixion. But more than anything else, for the first time in eternity, he is separated from his father. And he says, where are you, God? Why have you forsaken me? And it's a rhetorical question because he knows why he's fulfilling that prophecy. He's our sacrifice. He's taking our sin upon himself. Peter tells us he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. So there's darkness. There's desertion. And then there's death. We're told with a loud cry. Jesus breathed his last. That loud cry is probably what's recorded in John. The words. The words. It is finished, which in Aramaic means the bill is paid. It's done. Now, that's interesting that Jesus gave himself up to die. The Bible says that death comes through sin. Jesus was sinless, but he offered himself for death. In the original language, there's the sense of Jesus giving himself up to death here. It would have been at the end of this three hour period. Heading for the ninth hour when the Jews were offering their evening sacrifice. And it was Passover time. And as Jesus was dying on the cross, the Passover lambs, which were to bring forgiveness from God, were being offered. But Jesus on the cross was making the Passover lamb redundant once and for all. He died our death. So we've got darkness, desertion, death. And then finally, we've got declarations, two of them, to be precise. Firstly, there's a physical one in the temple. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Remember, this was at the time that the Jews were making their sacrifices. And the curtain would have been a huge 30 foot thing that blocked off the holiest of holies from people, separating them from the presence of God. A priest could go in there, but then only once a year. Suddenly it's ripped. It's ripped from top to bottom. The way is open. People can come to God. God is making a declaration. Through Jesus, you come. You need no priest to make an offering. And so freely at this Good Friday in this difficult time, we know we can come to God through Jesus. 
and then a declaration from a Roman soldier. He stood there in front of this. He heard Jesus breathe his last cry and saw how he died. And he said, surely this man was the son of God. Now That's really amazing. This is a Roman, someone from the occupying forces. He has no act to grind. He's been watching everything that's gone on. And he realizes that this man who has just died on the cross is the son of God. That's the response that we need to make to God this Good Friday. We need to look to Jesus and say, surely you are the son of God. We believe you. Jesus is crying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Tells us that he was abandoned by God so that we may never be. The curtain being ripped in two tells us that that we have access to God. And the Romans declaration here shows us that all we need to do is to call out to him. You may be really struggling at this present time. We all are. But we can call out to God. We can cling to the cross knowing. Ahead of the cross is the power of the resurrection. Well, we're going to bring our service to a close by singing a really beautiful song and it's a lovely arrangement of it sung by Catherine Scott when I survey the wondrous cross again if we can all stand that would be wonderful when I survey the wondrous cross on which the
Well, in the moment, I'm going to close in prayer. And then uh, we're going to play out with some really beautiful music from the Salvation Army, which I would like to dedicate to my father-in-law, Trevor Thorne, who loves Salvation Army music and has been a member of the Salvation Army for about 100 years um, and has driven the songsters and bands from all over the world around the UK on their tours. So I'm sure he's going to really enjoy that. Um, it, it's it's a like, nice compilation of different Good Friday themed about redeeming love. So do don't switch off. Listen to that because I think it will be a real blessing to you. Now may Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve Him with joy. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.